Hey everyone, today we're going to be creating an amortization table in Google Sheets. Um, amortization tables, as you probably know, are uh, something typically used in real estate and with mortgages to understand what your interest and principal balances and obligations are. And you are able to see that over time and you're able to see like over the, the life of the loan, your total principal, total interest. And so a very useful tool and, and uh, the amortization table is a great way to kind of understand some of those things a little bit better. So obviously with, with the amortization table, we're going to need a couple of things. And the present value, which is just basically the total loan amount. So assume that we want Want to get a home for five hundred thousand dollars we'll just go ahead and put that in and so that's that's our our loan amount that's the, the present value today and then interest rate there you know interest rates have changed a lot over the last couple of years so we're just going to do uh five percent but something to note with amortization tables and time value money is that in this situation it's going to we're going to be looking at it on a monthly basis so this interest rate is an annual rate and so what we're going to need to do is divide that by 12 to get our monthly rate so now we have our 0.42 percent so that's you know a twelfth of the five percent and so with periods we're going to assume it's a 30-year loan which is pretty typical for homes and we're going to do the same thing here we, we need to turn it to monthly so we're just going to take that uh that 30 and then we're going to multiply it by 12 and that gives us our 360 uh, payments that we're going to be making over the life of this loan and then with uh, our payment amount this is just a time value of money equation so we're just going to go ahead and do equals pmt to find our payment and so it's just you know like it says here it's just the periodic payment for an annuity investment so we'll just hit tab and then it's going to ask for certain things that we need so rate what was that rate that we that we were going to use? So our interest rate obviously is that 0.42 percent. We had a comma number of periods is going to be 360 periods over the life of the loan. Present value is going to be that five hundred thousand dollars. Those are the kind of three things that we need to find the payment. So we're going to hit enter, and you can see it's going to give us our negative two thousand six hundred eighty-four dollars is our our monthly payment, the regular payment that we're going to be making on this loan. And so you'll see that it's it's negative here and it's just something to do with Excel and accounting and you know it, the way that it views it as a negative payment because of the present value. If you want to switch that there's a couple things you can do. Obviously you can hit negative in that equation or you can make that $500,000 negative because if it's uh, a loan that's negative um, it's probably like it's a negative that's a, it's going to be a liability for you. So we're just going to we're going to do that uh, and then we'll have our payment information there. So now we have our payment amount and we can get going on our amortization table once we have all that information. And for period, what, what this is going to do is this is going to be each month is going to represent a period. So period one is our first month, period two, period three. And then we have to do that. We need to create periods all the way down to 360. So we'll just drag that all the way down. Keep going here. Uh, whatever it may be so we'll delete some of those and then now that we have our periods in place we're going to do our beginning value is just again that that present value and i'm actually just for i'm just going to get that so it's positive here just for the sake of keeping the math simple and then we know what our our payment is so our payment is that two thousand that payment every month but again with this I'm just going to make this be a negative payment so it's not uh, it's not going to reflect negative in here. We know our beginning value, what our monthly payment is, and this is where we're going to need the interest rates in the for our the rest of the amortization table. So to find our interest, what we're going to do is equals beginning value times the interest period. So this is our monthly interest period is going to determine what the interest is going to be on that beginning value. So we'll go ahead and hit enter. And we can see it's it's almost twenty one hundred dollars, two thousand eighty three dollars, which is if of our twenty six hundred dollar payment is huge. So now what we can do to find the principal is just equals our payment minus our interest, and that gives us the principal amount. And so because that's the principal, the principal essentially we're just reducing the beginning value by that principal amount. So we'll take our beginning value minus our principal, 
and that gives us four hundred ninety nine thousand dollars left. And so again, with with loans, the interest burden is very heavy on the front end, and it kind of tapers off or reduces over time. So you can see here that you're going to be paying very heavily that interest right up front. And so now that we have that information, we can start on that next period. We know that next month, our beginning value is really just going to be the ending value of the period before. And because we know what that payment is going to be, that payment's not going to change. What we can do is hit F4 here, and that's going to make it a, an absolute reference. And so it's not going to change. So we can, and with interest, what we're going to do, we're going to do kind of the same thing. But with interest, we didn't make our uh, our interest rate an absolute value. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now because otherwise it would throw everything off. If it would drag the interest rate down and, and capture periods and throw our math off. So what I can do there is just just make that interest rate an absolute value. I'm going to drag it down, and you can see it's going to be our our beginning value. We want to slide down with us, but we want to keep that interest rate the same. So again, that's kind of why I went through that same math. But essentially. It's the beginning value times our our monthly interest rate. And then principal, again, we can drag that down because it's only referring to data in our amortization table. And then again, the ending value, we can drag that down. And because it's just the beginning value minus the, the principal value. And so now that we have those first two lines, that really gives us everything we need, especially in that second line, that second month. Now we can just click and drag and we'll drag it all the way down to the end and you'll see it fills the whole amortization table out so we can again we're just showing you this is again that that absolute value is still referring to that same payment it hasn't changed and it shows us now what our beginning balance is so the our very last payment we're going to still make that 2684 payment and we know that this is right because it should all balance out and it should be uh, zero dollars and that's that's really when we know that we've we've landed on the correct numbers here so again like why this is interesting is you can go and look and see let's say okay maybe we want to know how much interest we're paying in that first year so we can just select that first year of, of uh, payments one through 12 and we can look oh my gosh we've paid $24,000 in interest and we've only paid $7,000 in principal. So obviously again the interest burden is very very heavy up front. I wanted to show you, you know, interesting things with interest in amortization tables. So uh, total principal what we're going to do is we're just going to do sum, select that column there, we'll hit enter. Our total principal is going to be the same thing as our our present value cuz it's just eating away at that present value amount. So with interest, I want to show you kind of the same thing where you're going to see that total amount that we've paid. Obviously, principal is static. It's not going to change anything. So we're going to do sum. And then we're going to select our interest column here. Make sure there's no gap there. And so we've paid almost as much in interest as we've paid in principal. So if you want to see what your total is, you can do one of two things. Look at your payment column and you can see that it's $966,000. So on that $500,000 loan, in reality, you're paying almost a million dollars. And obviously the easier thing would have been to just sum these two here. That That is, you know, obviously that's that's very crazy and that's why kind of what, what interest rates with them being so high is makes housing so un unaffordable what we can do if we kind of want to play around with this a little bit let's say our interest rate was two percent or 2.5 percent which never seen that low but we'll go ahead and enter you can see your interest payment went from 466,000 down to 211,000 so your total paid is going from almost a million dollars down to 700 and 11,000. So that interest has such a huge impact on what you're actually paying on that 2.5% interest. And then, you know, if you're to look nowadays, interest is a little bit higher. So like if we were to change that to 7.5%, you go, you know, you see that impact. Your monthly payment skyrockets. Your, well, your principal stays the same. Your interest is going from, you know, that 211 at 2.5% to 466 at 5%. 
And now at seven and a half percent, it's seven hundred and fifty-eight thousand dollars in interest uh, on that five hundred thousand dollar loan, which is which is insane. With a total like for a you know a five hundred thousand dollar house, you end up actually paying one point two one point three million dollars, which is crazy and really shows you the importance or the power that interest rates have in, in terms of affordability and, and housing and whatnot. So something you know, kind of a good exercise to go through as you're kind of looking at housing and investment opportunities is is looking at this amortization table, kind of playing around with some of the numbers and seeing what is feasible and what's not. But I hope this was helpful. I would love to to provide any additional content around this or answer any questions. And so, you know, please leave comments below and remember to like and subscribe to the Excel guy. Thanks and have a great day.